Long time no see everybody. I'm back and uh, welcome back to the channel. Taylor Sloop here. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. So, uh, I'm sorry I haven't uploaded in a while. Uh, it's been a really, really busy summer and it's still busy. I've been playing like four or five nights a week and it's great, uh, but I just haven't had time to upload. And let me rephrase that. I had time to upload, I just chose not to for a few months. And for that, I apologize. So we're back on it and I'm gonna start uploading weekly again and thank you guys so much for sticking around and we're almost at a thousand subscribers so I appreciate that guys and I thought it'd be fun to get back into the swing of things by doing a studio tour I haven't done one since 2019 and so much has changed down here uh, so I figured I'd show you everything and how I use it and uh, yeah, so so much has even changed since I did my last YouTube video. Uh, I've got a new drum set, I've got a couple new guitars, just so much has changed. So here we go guys, let's jump into it. Before we do, if you wouldn't mind liking, sharing, subscribing, I really appreciate it. And let's get to it. So I'll give you guys the view as if we're walking into the studio. And here it is. There's my whole world. That's where it all happens. So we'll start along this wall here. This is kind of the boring wall, I guess. Uh, this is an old Fender Pro Junior uh, combo, empty combo cabinet. And it's still got the speaker in it, but I took the chassis out because I'm going to make it into a head amplifier. So, yep, it's just empty. Just kind of a backup speaker cabinet, I guess. Uh, over here we've got my base cabinet. This is a Hartkey HD210. Really love this base cabinet. And for the stuff that I do, like if I'm playing bass live, I'm just filling in with a band and I'm running into the PA anyway. So this just kind of gives me some sound on stage. So it's nice for that. It is decently loud, especially with the amp that I use. Um, but anyway, really nice sounding cabinet. Highly recommend it. This is my vacuum. <laughs> Ooh. Over here we've got some old guitar hangers that I don't use anymore. You guys probably remember the old videos where the guitars were always hanging up. Uh, yeah, I wasn't a big fan of doing that. So, ended up putting cables on these. Down here we've got an old powered mixer and I use this if like I'm having a jam session down here or something. Or like I used to have band practice down here. And uh, this is what we would use. Actually, my band in high school used to use this mixer right here. So, yep. I've seen a, seen a lot of hours. Over here's my laptop. Uh, I really only use that if I'm away doing something. And it's about to get some upgrades to it. I don't use a lot of... Uh, well, let me start by saying now we're at my desk. So, woo! Uh, but I don't use any outboard gear for recording or anything, but I had all this rack space, so I figured I would use uh, that space to put in some drawers. And rack drawers are surprisingly almost as expensive as some outboard rack gear. So this is just for like my camera, uh, that's my humidifier remote, just miscellaneous stuff. The second one here I keep guitar stuff like strings, slides, um, whammy bars, cloths, and then in the bottom one I've got some miscellaneous stuff, there's some tubes in there, drum dial, um, some gloves if I have to move stuff around, and some batteries. Pretty exciting stuff guys, I gotta tell you. So over here, uh, let's take a look at my desk, let me move my chair out of the way. So the computer that I run is a Windows 10 homemade gaming PC. A guy in Akron made it and it's just amazing. He just did some upgrades to it recently. We threw in a solid state drive and oh my gosh it's so fast. And we also threw in a bunch more RAM. So it's yeah it's just really fast. It's like that scene in The Longest Yard where he's like he's fast. He's so fast. Anyway uh, this is my vocal microphone and I also use it for recording acoustic. This is an Audio Technica AT2020. Great microphone, and I was just recording some acoustics, so that's why it's angled. Um, and then we've got my studio monitors with Jimmy guarding the whole place, and these are JBL 306s. There's a picture of Cedar Point. I'm a huge roller coaster fan. 
Now the interface that I use is a Tascam US1641 and I needed something with enough inputs for all my drums. So I'll walk you guys through it here. This is my uh, vocal slash acoustic microphone. And then these ones that are numbered are all drum inputs. They all come from that snake down there. And then this is my guitar, uh, guitar microphone. And then this is my bass rig right here. So that's how that works. Here's my Beatles mug full of guitar picks. I've had that mug since I was like five years old. Now underneath here is one of my favorite purchases from this summer and that is my new JBL, uh, I don't know what size it is, I think it's a 10 inch subwoofer and it has just like taken my mixes to the next level and it's, it's so much fun. It's like I crank it up and this whole room just shakes. It's really, really nice. So, okay, this little thing right here is for my iPad when I teach lessons online. These are my lights that I use for YouTube videos. And um, yeah, they were just like $50 lights on Amazon. They do the job though. If it works, it works. Here's my shelf and it is looking pretty bare right now. So uh, up top here we've got a roller coaster model. That's actually the same coaster as in the picture. Yep, that's how much of a roller coaster fan I am. <laughs> Down here we've got my lap steel guitar. This is a Gretsch Electromatic lap steel, and I would love to learn to play this like way better than I can. I can play <laughs> chords because all you have to do is put the slide down. Uh, I can kind of play Sleepwalk on it, that's why I bought it. But I really want to record with it. I really want to learn how to play it better and record with it. So yeah, it's, uh, it's fun. I've been using my Fender Pro Junior a lot lately. I'm starting to run overdrive pedals again and I'm not really using my volume knob on my guitar anymore so this is my clean amp that I'm using and I'm about to make it into a uh, head unit so I'm gonna build a head cabinet for it. Over here is my bass amp this is an Eden WTX 500 and great sounding amp I've been a huge fan of Eden ever since I worked at the music store here in town and uh, it gets ran into the interface and then it has a speaker out that goes all the way over into the HD 210. So, sounds really good. Here's the Fender Supersonic. Uh, the fate of it in my possession is iffy at this point. So, since I'm not really running an overdriven amp anymore, I don't necessarily need it. I still have the black one as well. So we'll see what happens with those. If I uh, end up deciding to sell them on reverb or something, I'll let you guys know if anybody's interested in the Supersonic. So down here was where my Dr. Z was, I just sold that. Uh, I'm gonna replace it with something else, another clean amp, most likely. And then um, back here we've got some guitar straps. I'll show you this one here that my uncle made for me for my birthday. Um, it's for my Les Paul. Really cool. So yeah, got a bunch of guitar straps, some speaker cables. I know, the exciting stuff, right guys? So over here we've got this small pedal board. It was supposed to be like a bedroom board, but I have not used it in my bedroom. Uh, I think if I end up getting like a church gig or something, this will be the board that I take. So it'll be good for something like that. Just small, compact. I bought another Fender Hot Rod Deluxe cabinet. I just love these things for, I think I paid like 165 bucks for this and I threw in a greenback, it sounds so good. Just a 112, that's all you really need. <laughs> well, you know, in certain applications. Anyway, on to these. Then we've got some uh, PA speakers here. This is what my band used to use back in high school, these PR-15s by PV. And I use these if we're doing like a jam session or something. Down below we've got the Carvin 942s. Uh, this, these were actually my dad and my uncles back in the 90s and then we used them in the 2000s when I was like a teenager and I first started playing out in bars. So they're kind of sentimental to me. I bought them off my uncle. And now, drum roll please, no pun intended. This is what I'm excited the most for to show you guys. And uh, I'm going to be doing a full demo on this probably next week. Uh, this is my new drum set. 
You guys know that I love the Ludwig kit, the John Bonham kit. The problem was, uh, first of all, portability, when I had to like fill in with bands and stuff, they just aren't portable, those sizes. I mean, especially for me, I drive a car, so it just wasn't practical. I missed my PDP kit, and I've always wanted a DW kit, so I figured, you know what? Let's just go ahead, I wanna get what I wanna get, and uh, Ludwig's covered like maybe a quarter of what these cost, but these were, you know, I still got a great deal on these. Got them through Sweetwater, um, and it is a DW Performance Kit, uh, all maple shells, and that's an 1822 kick drum. It came with a 9x13 rack tom. I added on a 9x12 rack tom, and then it came with a 1616 floor. So I love the sizes of the drums, uh, and then I got these roto toms off my dad, so. I just wanted more sounds, I guess, uh, and they sound really, really good. For cymbals right now, I'm using a Sabian China, a Dream Paper Thin Crash, and a Dream Paper Thin Ride Cymbal. I'll give you guys a view of the kit back here. Still using my Ludwig Black Magic Snare. That thing sounds great. So there it is, guys. You're going to see a demo on that soon. Uh, let's go back out here. And... Um, I'm using an M Audio Pro 88 keyboard. I've had this thing since I was about 17. And when I bought it in the store, it sounded really, really good. The stock sound sounded really, really good. I got it home and it sounded like complete garbage. So I was like, dang it, what's the problem? Uh, well, you know, I don't know. Stuff just sounds different in the store, I guess. So I ended up getting this uh, Roland JV1010, I think, off my uncle. That thing sounds really good. All the keyboard sounds that you guys hear me do, it comes out of this thing. And then this is pretty much, you know, I found out that this is just really supposed to be a MIDI controller, and that's why the sound sounds so terrible. Um, so yeah, it works good for that. I'm actually considering getting a real upright piano for down here. I just think that that would motivate me to play piano a little more because there's just something about the feeling of a real piano versus a keyboard. You know, if you're a keyboard player or a piano player, I think you know what I'm talking about. But anyway, I digress. Now on to the guitars. There they are. That's most of them. Some others are in some cases. Um, so we'll start with this one. You guys haven't seen this one yet, even though I've had it for over a year now. This is a uh, Gretsch 6120. This is an absolutely fantastic guitar. It's a 2001. I'm a huge Brian Setzer fan, so that's why I bought it. Um, and it's made in Japan. Sounds fantastic. It's got the Filtertrons in it. And I took out the mud switch, moved over the uh, selector switch to look like Brian Setzer's. I just need to put some dice down at the bottom for the knobs. All right, on to my Telecaster. You guys have seen that plenty of times. Uh, nothing's really changed with that since you guys have seen it last. And then we've got my Strat that I call Layla. This is my Floyd Strat. Played it at a million gigs. It's got a Seymour Duncan uh, JB in the bridge. And it's also been signed by Dr. Z. So yeah, I've had that one since I was about 18. This one is new, you guys haven't seen this one yet. Do a demo on this one soon. This is my Hendrix Strat. Uh, I found a guy selling just a body on Reverb, so I bought it. And I threw in a Seymour Duncan uh, Custom Shop Pearly Gates um, in the bridge. And I'm not crazy about it on this guitar, so I think I'm gonna be throwing in just um, uh, maybe like a Lawler Dirty Blonde or something. I don't know, maybe another Seymour Duncan. I kind of want something that's just single coil though, uh, because having that uh, pick up backwards like that, it kind of gives it a fatter sound, which I like. I mean, I don't know why all strats aren't like that. But anyway, the body uh, was just by itself. I bought a Fender Roasted Maple Neck to go with it. Had the fretboard sanded down, because it was a little too glossy for my taste. In the back, we've got some Fender Locking Tuners. That's all you need to know right there. 
I always wanted a Hendrix Strat, so I was really excited to uh, get these parts and put it together. It's close enough to a Hendrix Strat. I mean, it's a Hendrix body, and you know, I like the neck better than the Hendrix Strats. This is my first Strat I ever had. This is a uh, 2000, uh, 2000, 2000 Mexican Strat, and uh, I bought this when I was 18. Uh, one night I was wiring up something and it got to be too late. The stores weren't open for the part that I needed. So I had the hot soldering iron, so I figured, well, I'm just going to carve the names of all my heroes into this guitar. Uh, I knew I was never going to sell this guitar, so that's what I did. We got RRS, which is my uncle, taught me how to play. Richie Valens, John Mayer, Jimi Hendrix, The Edge, Eric Clapton, Carl Wilson from the Beach Boys, Vince Gill, Brad Paisley's in there. It's kind of blocked by the light right now. Uh, SRV, Brian Setzer, there's Brad right there. TB for Tom Bukovac, love Tom Bukovac. If you guys haven't checked out homeschooling, be sure to. Uh, Kenny Wayne Shepherd, Jimi Hendrix, and Andy Summers. And then on the back, I wrote some stuff too. <laughs> My first Strat, uh, let's see, I call it the Park Ave guitar because I bought it at a drug mart on Park Avenue. It was a drug mart deal. 12 <laughs> uh, 2014. And then Fly on Little Wing because that's like my favorite lyric line of all time. I should call that guitar Little Wing, I guess. Uh, here's my most sentimental guitar. This is my 1980 Gibson Les Paul Custom. Uh, you guys know the story behind this one, it was my uncle's, he played it for years, and I threw a um, pearly gates in that as well, and then it's got a jazz neck pickup in the neck, great sounding guitar right there, 1980 Les Paul Custom. Next we've got another one of my favorites, and you guys have seen this one too. This is my 1968 Gibson ES335, always wanted a 335. Got a good deal on this one. It was owned by a couple of local heroes of mine. And uh, yeah, just one of my favorite guitars. Um, it's also got a Pearly Gates in it. Not a whole lot of different tones here. <laughs> now I'm probably gonna end up putting something else in there. Uh, maybe maybe like a, a 59 or something by Seymour Duncan. But it's got the Fat Cat P90 in it. Sounds great. Took the pickguard off a while ago. I think I'm gonna put it back on though. Um, I don't know. We'll see. All right, then over here we've got my bass guitars. I've just got a P bass. Uh, it's a, it's just a Mexican player series, Tide Pool Blue, and I love the color of it. Kind of matches my Telecaster. Uh, my buddy Doug, who used to be the guitar tech for the Gin Blossoms, um, kind of found this bass for me. Uh, so Doug, thank you. And then this is my jazz bass. It's exactly the same thing. Uh, Fender Mexican Player Series, same color and everything. So, yep, yeah, there it is. All right, then we've got my Eastman. I haven't done a demo on this one. You guys have seen me play this before, uh, but I've never done a real demo on it. So I'm gonna get ready to do one here soon. This is a fantastic acoustic guitar and Eastman doesn't get enough credit for uh, what they do. They take, you know, um, they're not really making anything original in the acoustic department, but they're taking really good uh, guitar models, and I think they're making great quality instruments for great prices. Um, I don't think I paid a thousand dollars for this thing, and it's fantastic. It sounds better than a J45. I played it next to a J45, and it sounds better, in my opinion. I keep this one in standard tuning. If I'm playing a, or if I'm recording a song with like drums and you know electric guitar and everything, but I need an acoustic uh, part in there, this is the guitar I'll use because it's got kind of more of a scooped mid thing to it. And then if I'm recording a song that's just acoustic guitar, I will use my favorite guitar I own, and that is my Martin D28. Now this one stays a half step down because this is the guitar that I use uh, four or five nights a week. Um, I use this thing all the time. It's my baby. <laughs> it's still got the sound hole plug in it. Just because I was too lazy to take it out before shooting this video. I've actually got to use it tonight. 
There it is. That's a uh, 2020. Yeah, 2020 Martin D28. It's the 2017 Reimagined series, and it is just out of all my guitars, it's my favorite. It just sounds so good. So there it is. All right, guys. Now I'll walk you into this like little hallway here and show you kind of what I got going on back here. Uh, there's the other carbon speaker. If we're doing like a jam session or something, I've got my uh, dehumidifier over here. Uh, I use an EV Evolve system for my acoustic shows and I've got two of them. And here's the other one, it's the Evolve 50. Um, I typically only take one to my acoustic shows. That pretty much covers every acoustic show that I do. Um, so gets the job done, but I have two of them. So. These shelves over here, just storage and everything. Here's some cables in there. You know, some old drum stuff, my old snare. Uh, this is actually full of pedals. So uh, I need to really go through there and sell some of those because they haven't been out of there in like years. All right, then over into this room. This is the last room of the tour, guys. These are my guitar cases where I store my cases. I have a lot of guitar cases. And then this is the cabinet that I record with. This is another Hot Rod Deluxe cabinet. And it's a 112, mic'd up with a SM57. And uh, both the cables, the speaker cable and the mic cable, they come out of here. And they go through here, around back of the guitars, and over around here, around the keyboard. And they come right there, that's where they are. And they go <laughs> back behind the shelf. And then they end up, uh, well actually the speaker cable ends up in whatever amp it's going to. And then the mic cable comes right there. So I know it says snare on it, it's an old cable. So anyway guys, that is the video, that's the studio tour. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. And uh, thank you so much again for all the support and all the continued watching. And <laughs> I just, I really appreciate it guys. And we're almost to the 1,000 subscribers. Maybe by the time this video is uploaded, we'll be there. Um, but thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, please be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And if you guys have any questions about anything I use, just leave a comment, and I'll be sure to answer those. I appreciate it so much, guys. And I'll see you next week with a new video. Keep on rocking.